her beauty is in the diversity. Her power is in the unity. Nigeria, our country, is for you and for me. Let's make it the Nigeria of our dream. Advocate Broadcasting Network. Hello and welcome to another beautiful Saturday here on Softline. I am Nancy Banigo and as usual this is Family Saturday so I welcome you specially. So yesterday the world celebrated Zero Discrimination Day. March 1st every year is recognized by the United Nations as a day set aside to highlight the right of people living with HIV virus viral hepatitis or sexually transmitted diseases. The day is also used to highlight the right of individuals to live full, healthy life regardless of their health status. The theme for this year is um, to protect everyone's health, protect everyone's right. It was a year goes by, this was how it started, but now the other forms of indiscrimination has been incorporated into today's celebration. We ha now have to protect people's rights regardless of who they are, regardless of the kind of life they chose to live, you know, to protect human rights. You have the right to live your life. So that's the special day yesterday. But today we decided to talk about it on Softline Family Saturday because there is so much to talk about when it comes to discrimination. I know the world has really, really talked about discrimination, but believe me, there are still many things people discriminate, you know, talked about HIV, people still discriminate, people living with HIV, you know, people with Down syndrome, people with, you just name it. There are so many of them that people still discriminate against. So my co-host is not here, but I'm sure she's on her way. So we'll go on this very short break. And when we return, I shall be introducing my guests as well as my topic. Stay with us. We'll be right back. In a world of overwhelming voices where everyone has different opinion on different issues, it is important that we bring the core issue to the fore. Join me, Nancy Bonigo, on Softline as we lend our voices to inform and influence your thoughts and actions. This is not just mere talk, it is an invocative program that touches the core of our existence. Life is a combination of colors and their experience in its beauty. The Lifestyle Gallery showcases the beautiful blends of African lifestyle. A TV magazine of lifestyle, food, homes, and fashion combined with interesting interviews on trending issues. I am Nana Abna. Welcome to my world. Join me every Saturday at 2 p.m. and a repeat on Sunday. Welcome to the rule of the majority, a government in which the supreme power is vested in the people and supervised through a system of representation. Democracy belongs to the people. Political Trail follows this development and many more. Political Trail, trailing political developments. Nigeria is a great country. Blessed with human and natural resources. Born on October 1st, 1960. And like a child who's grown into an adult has faced her own share of challenges. But Nigeria has the capacity 
to fulfill her destiny. With great minds and great leaders, a bright future is guaranteed. Though tribes and tongues may differ, her beauty is in the diversity. Her power is in the unity. Nigeria, our country, is for you and for me. Let's make it the Nigeria of our dream. Advocate Broadcasting Network, a part of you. This is Event 360. My name is Bucci. I'm Nathaniel Bassi. Hey everybody, this is Sonny Badu. My name is Imer Bishop Omar. This is your boy Kenny Black. I'm Hezekiah Walker. My name is Hilda Bassi. Hi, my name is Emmanuel BBN Season 6 finalist, Mr. Africa International. Keep watching Event 360. Keep watching Event 360. Keep watching Event 360. Don't touch it. We're Zaddy. While you're on board, keep watching Event 360. Keep watching Event 360. Keep watching Event 360. Event 360, anytime, any day. Keep watching Event 360. I need you to keep watching Event 360. Keep watching Event 360. Keep watching Event 360. Don't go away. Main favorite, remain lifted, and keep watching Event 360. Keep watching Event 360. Event. Keep watching. Keep watching events 360. Keep on watching and never stop watching. Event 360. Do not touch that dialogue. Say. In a world of overwhelming voices where everyone has different opinion on different issues, it is important that we bring the core issue to the fore. Join me, Nancy Bonigo, on Softline as we lend our voices to inform and influence your thoughts and actions. This is not just mere talk, it is an invocative program that touches the core of our existence. All right, thank you for being there and welcome back. So I have my guest and uh, as well as my co-host, she's back. <laughs> she's back, but since she's a funky mama, what do we do? We just have to tolerate it. <laughs> so funky mama, how have you been? Ah, good, Nancy. Mm. Please don't crucify me today. It's been long, I've been naughty. Mm -hmm. Forgive me if you ask, Nancy, I'm so sorry. <laughs> but I'm now. Mm. Welcome to the show. All right, so thank you for coming late. <laughs> All the same, thank you. <laughs> All right, so let's introduce our guests, our very beautiful Mrs. Mbiatke. <laughs> I got the name today. <laughs> All right, so she's a simply teach audacious, you know, educational. She's an educational consultant. Uh, she's a school administrator, learning disability and special need expert and my favorite of all inclusive education advocates mm -hmm. you're welcome to the show thank you you're it's welcome. always a pleasure having you yeah it's always an exciting time ah. being here uh -huh. okay so today we're discussing zero discrimination day you know this happened yesterday but we said there are so many things people discriminate against so we decided to talk about it let, let me start with funky grandma funky grandma i know you're a women advocate you talk for women and all that but in your years of advocating for women, are there things you think uh, should have, we should have achieved by now that is still lingering? Do we have discrimination of any kind in that department? Yeah, there are so many. Mm. Um, I want to uh, actually talk about the girl child, uh, of which I am an advocate. Okay. Um, it's actually the girls that um, are, forced, are forced themselves out of the country to oh. go to other parts of the world. Those ones are the worst in, in, my, in all in my years of 
going after the girl child. Because when they travel out of the country in the way they do through the Sahara Desert or through water. Mm, okay, they, traffic. Yes, trafficking, yeah. girl child trafficking. Okay. They suffer so much on the way, on their way to mm. where they want to intend to go and think they are going for a better life or they are going to find a greener pasture. Mm. What they pass through while they are on the journey through the desert or through the waters, mm. they have already started experiencing horrible things mm. they never thought about. Mm. Mm. And when they find it so difficult after they have gone to Libya, wherever they want to be, and they go through, <laughs> oh my God, when oh, I was talking about this, I was crying when I was talking about this some time mm. before. After all the pain and suffering, childbearing, rigorously done everything bad and they're not looking for a way to come back and they're struggling how do I come back you sleep with this you sleep with this one you sleep with that one you get married by force before you now find your way back and mm. when they're back mm. the stigmatization is worse they find it difficult to get I think their this is back. even especially if they were being brought back by uh, what they call them Maybe organizations. Yes, organizations. Most mm. of the times, sometimes they can't find their way. Sometimes um, the, the military people there that try to handle them and thought they were helping them, instead of that helping them and helping them the other way, they'll destroy their lives and push them up. Mm. And some organizations can pick them up and now help them. They, they can't, they find it difficult to enter the vehicle and come back to Nigeria. Wow. So because when they come back like that, they themselves, they can't face people at all. Mm. So they need to go through a lot of learning. They go to put them in the Therapy school. Yeah, the digital that. therapy, teach them all over again. Let them have their self-esteem mm. back. Mm. Let them be able to face their parents. Let them be able to face their friends. And then the only bad thing there is they don't really like sharing their experiences because they are feeling um, it's not going to help others. Rather, they're thinking about themselves mm. or they're trying to cover up themselves. They don't want to talk about it because mm. of no matter how they will still be discriminated mm. a lot of people even family members will still discriminate so they rather keep quiet open up to the ngos get their stories and mm. just find a place and hide while they uh, recuperate oh goodness that's a sad one <sighs> but seriously I, I don't know how we can help that, that is the issue. Yes, that's the issue. Every mm. time we talk about this, NGOs, CSOs, we talk about all of this, we shout, we celebrate. As I was going through this today, I said, what are we celebrating? What is it? What, is this? what are we celebrating? First February, we celebrated a uh, day of freedom from slavery. What for? Mm. Oh, a lot of people are still enslaved. So what are we celebrating? Mm. What is the nation celebrating? Yesterday, that of uh, zero, zero discrimination. discrimination. Where, where is the effect? What effects are we seeing? That's what I really want to have. <laughs> Let's yeah, talk about. We really, we still yeah, have what's the effect? Well, all these celebrations all over the years, UN, UK, where has it led, especially Nigeria, to? Mm. We join them to celebrate. Mm. We go out, we wear t shirts, we do a lot of stuff, you know, carry placards, sing and dance and mm. celebrate, and nothing is done. Mm. That's and, my problem. And um, this zero discrimination, this year is 10 years, and we can't still say... Okay, Hold on we, to something yeah, that is encouraging, yeah. you know. All right. Okay, so let's give the floor to Mrs. Mrs. Thomas. What is it? How can we achieve zero discrimination? I guess mm. your own field, uh, Thank you, Grandma talked about uh, the gender, uh, yeah, gender and, and uh, girl trafficking. Exactly. Yeah. So now let's talk about where you are specialized. I know you you talk mm. about children with neurological Conditions. problems yes. and all that. So let's let's take it to that line now. Um, I ask myself this question: Is zero discrimination really possible? Mm. Because first, it starts from the grassroots, mm. and the grassroots is the anchor point of the society. Mm cultural strongholds, religious, religious strangulations. Mm -hmm. Th there's too much, there's too much, there's no escape um, route, really, if you look at it. So, I, but I think if we take it back to the family unit, mm -hmm. if each family can stop stigmatization, then the society will eventually welcome some form of freedom from stigmatization. Mm -hmm. When you talk about families, I don't understand. Is it stigmatizing against their own? Or yes. Why not? Yeah. It starts, this stigmatization it starts, starts from the family. Yeah. I have a young, um, a young man that I know. 
that when he became blind, mm. he woke up blind. Mm. He wasn't born blind. Mm. He woke up blind, but luckily for him, he was picked up. He's now a very well-known um, lawyer, and um, his name is Chikwado. Now, Chikwado will always say that the first place he met stigmatization was his own family. Oh. So family is always the first. Okay, let's look at, um, mm. so, um, for example, you have a child with, not you, someone has a child with um, <laughs> maybe Down syndrome, which mm. is very noticeable. Mm -hmm. The first people that will ask you for explanations will be members of your own household. Mm. So it starts from there. So is it really possible? Mm. Even for us that work with these kids, we face stigmatization. People will tell me, for example, oh, Mrs. Thomas, don't even try childbearing because you've touched them so much that you end up with <laughs> Having one of them. Yes. Mm. You know, they tell me that a lot. Oh, you're always hugging them. Are you sure? Mm. Sometimes you pick up a child with a disability, drop, I want to pick up a regular child. The parents won't oh. let you. Oh, my yes. God. Yes. The parents won't let you touch their child. Oh, my God. Yeah. Mm. So it's they're like, bad. oh, you need to go through Cleanse some yourself. Of Cleanse yourself. Oh, you know, so I get that question a lot. Are you sure? Don't try giving birth. You have a child like this. Are you sure this would affect you? I have that a lot. And even, and even from people, key, um, parents with regular children, mm. they won't want you, they won't want me to associate with their children. They don't want me to carry because they are not sure if I have a residue mm. wow. of the other one. Mm. In churches, they face it sometimes. Because of ignorance, you hear some people say it's because of it's um, a generational, generational curse. curse or something. No the woman seated there listening to you is already dead. Mm. Because she can't, sitting and listening to you say that, you know, mm. everyone would turn to her. Mm. And the curious man would, would try to find out scenes, possible scenes mm. that, would have, that would have been committed yeah, in that family. Yeah. Okay, a woman shared with me, a parent shared with me yesterday. She said, someone called and said, seeing that you waited for eight years without having a child, can you tell us, did you go to the water to look for a child? How do you say that to a mother mm. that is fighting her own emotional this in fighting to save her child. The child has Down syndrome. Oh How do you God. say that to the mother? Mm. And you could see, because I had put up a post three days back asking for um, warmth for families, non-stigmatization. And she said, Mrs. Thomas, thank you for putting up that post. Can you I need to keep it on replay so that when the attack becomes too much, I can know that there's one person that in this holding, world yeah. that understands us. Mm. You need to see the way parents cry. So of them don't even want to identify with their children. Oh. You ask me, Mrs. Thomas, can you have a boarding facility? What do they want to do? They're if you drop rid. that child, that is the they end. end. Yeah, they are gone. They are gone, but they are ready to give you money. Yeah. Just don't, I, sometimes I get calls, Mrs. Thomas, I'm the manager to the child's father. The father doesn't want to be known. He doesn't want to associate, but they're ready to just pay you to put this child in a facility, but don't mention my name. Don't associate me. Do you know how many children are in their homes? Their parents when they are hidden away. Goodness. Yes. Yeah, wow. About that. It's, it's so sad. It's so sad. <laughs> but about that. I, I, if not hearing this from you, an expert, I wouldn't have, you know, well, believed it. Here, because I feel like um, the family is where you should get that love, regardless of your situation. I mean, who discriminates their own? Oh, let you me know? shock you. <laughs> there are parents. A lot of marriages have packed up because they have a child. I know yeah. up to five or more that the man has worked. The other man said, I can't train an animal. Oh my God. The child is half human. Some people believe they're spirits. Some people believe they are from the water. I actually met a woman that said, oh, in their village, they drop the child. By That's the for river. cerebral palsy now. Hmm. So they drop the child by, by the, the river, river and the water carries Please the child away. The child away. So there have met more than five families that the husband has left the wife. Sometimes when seated in my office and we are trying to give support, because one of the things we do is yeah, give support, support to these families, the man stands up, tell her to check her family. It must be from her family. We don't have this in, in our, our family, family and walks out leaving the crying woman. The crying wife, not woman in the office. Mm. So I'm going say, Mrs. Thomas, please don't tell my husband. Because, in fact, the discrimination starts from the spouse. You have to explain how oh, you oh. give it to that child. Which member of your family? You, so it starts from spousal discrimination first. 
for the women, the first, the first people that discriminate them is their husbands, their families, even children, siblings. So how do you handle discriminate? this? When it comes to office like that, in that manner, <laughs> husband walks away, the crying mother is there. She needs another set of therapy. Okay. She needs so another how do you set handle of her? How does she now leave your office? Do you handle it there direct? Do you, whatever, what do you do? It's going to be a continuous, yes. Okay. Okay. I get her number, we okay. start talking, we start talking. Sometimes the man goes and never comes back. Mm. I know families like that. Mm. The other one, he went and got married. Oh. He married another person and started a family. Like that was their first mm. child. That was their first child. He's you know, I, I, I'm, I'm beginning autistic. to think this. Is it? Yeah. Could it be that um, no? Somebody will be forced to think that um, probably the cost of taking care of such a child. Mm -mm. Not the cost. Finances has nothing to do with it. The, the the man I'm talking about now. This other one works in Shell. He works in an oil company. Then I have a parent right now that the man has and has blocked her. As at Friday, she told me he's blocked her. She can't have any access. And the child is non-verbal. She can't have any access to the man. She sells in Akban and them here. So she's like, how can you help me? She now told me if I see someone that wants the son, she's ready, she's so frustrated that she wants to, to give, the, give out the son for whatever purpose they, they want to use the son for. Your, your mic, your mic has okay. just said something. It's a, it's, a, it's a very serious It's situation. a very horrible... Um, okay, so with all these problems, how do we handle it? You know, because when we talk about discrimination, you know, discriminating, you can, you can fight the society. But where do you go to if the people discriminating against you are the people who are supposed to love you? It, it looks as if the world is against the person. So how do we begin to handle? Should we say begin to enlighten the public, begin to educate churches, you know, on some of these illnesses? that could make children look like this. So that it, it shouldn't be like um, everything is spiritual. It is actually a, what they call it, is a health issue. Mm. Okay. Amazingly, um, learning disabilities are not even, um, they're not even disease. It's not a disease. It's not an illness. That's why I made a video two days ago. I said, you don't say my child has autism. Mm. In fact, as a parent, once you say that, you're giving a warning signal. My child has, has autism. Can you shift? My child has autism, <laughs> it, uh, it's communicable. Can My child see? has autism, be on the alert. My child has Down syndrome. So you don't say that, already you're profiling. People do that? Yeah, because they don't know. So they well, say, my normal. child, if I say my, I have, that's An a danger. Child. Not even that, once I say I have, <laughs> that's a call for being on alert. So as a parent, when you say, my child has autism, that means you need to be careful, something. Rather, you don't say my child has autism, you say my child is autistic. Showing that it's not a disease, it's not communicable, it's a condition. You don't say, my child has dyslexia. You say, my child is dyslexic. That means it's a condition. Yes. Mm. My child is dyslexic, not my child my has. has. That's even a discriminatory statement yeah, already, already on its own. Yeah, by saying the child when has, you say my child has uh, which autism. Which means like it was contacted or Yes, you are profiling already. <laughs> so yeah. you say my child is <laughs> dyslexic. Oh, oh my goodness. I wish many parents with <laughs> uh, children with this condition are aware of this. Because I have seen yeah. there's this trending video where people come out and say, of course, uh, this, of course, kind of challenge. You say, mm. I'm an autistic mom. I'm a, I'm a mom of an autistic child. Of course, you know. So this, they are not looking at it like the child is, is a condition. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, like a disease. So stay away from it just like you yes, have said. Yes, you're giving a <laughs> warning <laughs> signal. You're already <laughs> discriminating. <laughs> this, this, this is serious. Oh, my child has autism. For the time. Maybe, really? for example, the child is running around in a public place and the parents say, oh, my oh. child has Oh, yeah, I understand that. that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you don't say mm -hmm. that. Either you keep quiet. Or... No, you don't keep quiet because it's nothing. You are not. I tell parents you don't apologize for it. Yeah. Because it's not man-made. Yeah. So yeah, what are you apologizing for? What are you apologizing for? From factory setting in quotes, that part of the brain is disabled. So if you have to blame anything, blame nature. Mm. So what are? You, why are you apologizing? To people. Yeah, to people. So you mm. just oh. My child is, if the child brings up I'm um, certain, yeah. you know, because yeah. ch kids yeah. with autism don't have the lack social skills. Mm -hmm. So they are the ones that will slide, maybe if your child has mm. ADHD too, they are the ones that will, you know, maybe they don't make eye contact and people will be wondering, oh, this one doesn't have home training. You can say, he's autistic. Mm. Tony is autistic, ma'am. 
not. I'm and sorry. My son, he has. Tony has autism. That's discriminatory. Oh, Tony is autistic. And that's fine. How often do you teach this to people? <laughs> because I really think this should be loud. It should be loud. Because <laughs> I'm just hearing this. I've never looked at it like it's saying a child yeah. has autism as yeah. being discriminatory. It's you know? discriminatory. So how often do you teach this? Apart from your settings, your, in your office. You know, do you go about like you know, go to yeah. churches, go to schools and all that? Are you there are able schools to that will that? not even mm -hmm. um, accept. That schools have walked to schools and then they don't even want to hear it. Parents will withdraw. Mm. A lot of schools here in town. Like, I don't really get it. That you want Once to you talk about, awareness? yes, you, want, you want to, to like, give You even want to train their teachers. Because one of the things we do is that we train teachers. Okay. So when you even want to train their teachers, in fact, no teacher, no one should be given a teaching certificate without having a knowledge of... Oh. How to handle of special oh, needs okay. and learning disabilities. Do you Department. have any? Do you have any affiliation to the special school? We have our own organization, okay, Teach Audacious. Yes. Okay. In fact, let me shock but you. But there's an, a special school that yes. I, you, yes. know, you know about this. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me shock you. Ninety-seven percent of people working on Earth have one learning disability or, or the, the other. other. Yes. So when you are, oh, is it because the other person's son is more pronounced? Yeah. Mm. That's the problem. Okay. So you even go to school and they're like, don't say it. The parents will start withdrawing the child. It, once they see, they withdraw. Some school owners don't even want to hear it. Mrs. Thomas, in fact, I think the other day I went to a school and I heard that, oh, once Mrs. Thomas enters your school, oh. she's going to be talking about. Oh, so before oh. I even got there, they were already out with their bullets <laughs> and waiting for me, you know. And it was later, like three, four months later, that someone just told me that, oh, they had already said, you see, Mrs. Thomas, once she enters your school, she's shouting inclusive education. So right now, I'm already, the minister has gone to allow her enter your school. <laughs> she's going to tell you about the inclusive. Oh yes, goodness. I heard that, and I felt really bad. Oh, oh my God. Yes, I felt so yeah. bad. So how, how okay. So I never knew this, you know. Mm -hmm. Some of the things she's actually saying is something I never imagined, you know. Some but even in your school, you don't have kids with special needs. We have. You know, it's not as much pronounced, okay. you know. Like, um, um, I was posted to this new, this new school that I've been posted to as the vice principal. And there are some students that came in JS1 admissions, and then they're not able to do, they're not able to speak well, they're not able to write properly. Mm -hmm. They can't, they mm -hmm. can't read, you know. Mm -hmm. So... Since um, I'm an English teacher, um, so this, uh, the principal was asking us, is there any way you can help these students as they're coming in from JS1? Is there any way we can separate them and teach? No, not separate them, like they just teach. Okay. You know, maybe okay, you, to bring them up to. Oh, uh, yeah, to that, to that standard, mm -hmm. you know. Okay. So, like during break, 40 minutes, okay. we ask the children, okay, meet this teacher, meet this teacher, just that break time. They, we have a. Um, some small texts that can help them, you know, the way they pronounce okay. words and all of that. Okay. So we have been doing that for now, mm -hmm. and they are enjoying it, you know. They are feeling better. Okay, but then how, how do they relate with other children? They are fine. You know, these ones are not really... Can I say something? <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were... You, you, you know, they are fine, you know. <laughs> not even that. Okay. Not even that, They're not right? really... They're, 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 they're state. <laughs> Mm -mm. That's dyslexia. Okay. Dyslexia is a language processing <coughs> um, disability. Okay. And that's why they are good in dyslexics and um, kids with autism. Mm. They are very good in rote memorization. Oh. You will feel that they are good, they are improving because they've crammed it. Try it on Monday. Take them, bring out those words individually and see if they can identify yeah. it. And oh, they've identified. Yes. Yes, really. no. There is a strategy. For the only problem them. we have that some letters like R, L, some okay. sounds, they mix it up, oh, you know. Okay. And when they leave, I'm start thinking, is there a problem from birth? We will it's think, dyslexia. Um, is it a problem from birth? Is the there any way of, we can? Now, the part of the brain mm. responsible for reading, listening, writing, and spelling okay. is disabled. Okay. It is not missing. It is disabled. disabled. Okay. So now, let us jump at them. Okay. At the, that's why okay. they mix it up. Yeah. They'll mistake uh, maybe M for W. Yeah. They'll mistake B for D. If you ask them to write, they'll always, their colors, the pink for red, 
and all of that. Now, there is a way to teach them. That's why early intervention is key. Mm. There's a way to teach them because they're very good in arts. If you work well yeah, with, them, with them, they're good in arts and a lot of um, okay. things. So now, what you Skill, do? Because um, yes, their um, their the their um, disability helps them with problem solving. So now they see the bigger picture. They get the answer from the bigger picture and solve it in the smaller. smaller so you one. teach them from complex yeah. to simple. simple. But regular oh. children, you Supposedly teach from simple, simple to, to complex. complex. So they see the large mm. picture. So their brain is in a puzzle, it's jumping, it's, they can't get the words right. It's a language processing disorder. Hmm. Maybe it can be handled, can't it? Can mm, it can be handled, can but be then let's not forget <laughs> about brain plasticity. That means with early intervention, because uh -huh. the brain has the capacity to enlarge. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if the intervention was done earlier, yeah, yeah. you may not even, notice. you may notice or it won't be that obvi obvious. obvious. Okay. But with older kids and adults, you okay. need more yeah, 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 training. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow, it's obvious. Like <laughs> your 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 principal was found, was um, found himself in a very confused state. Yes, because but we, if you have teachers who are trained, just like she said, yeah, that's what that I'm line, thinking. Because we speak, were wondering, yeah, they can speak the whole English, but once it comes to reading, that's where the problem is. They don't have they any problem. You know, they actually, mm. actually, actually, this particular set of boys, they are twins. They talk slowly. So when they begin to read, they will take one word at a time. <laughs> we are going because their brain is trying to consolidate. Okay, so how about writing? Do they do they write normal? Uh, yeah, they write. Okay. We give them go and copy, go and rewrite, write it, write all over again, bring okay. it back. All right. So let, let's know. let's go on a very short break. We are due for a break. We'll come back. Stay with us of overwhelming voices where everyone has different opinion on different issues. It is important that we bring the core issue to the fore. Join me, Nancy Bonigo, on Softline as we lend our voices to inform and influence your thoughts and actions. This is not just mere talk, it is an invocative program that touches the core of our existence. Welcome to the rule of the majority, a government in which the supreme power is vested in the people and supervised through a system of representation. Democracy belongs to the people. Political Trail follows this development and many more. Political Trail, trailing political developments. Life is a combination of colors and experience in its beauty. The Lifestyle Gallery showcases the beautiful blends of African lifestyle. A TV magazine of lifestyle, food, homes, and fashion combined with interesting interviews on trending issues. I am Nana Abna. Welcome to my world. Join me every Saturday at 2 p.m. and a repeat on Sunday. In a world of overwhelming voices where everyone has different opinion on different issues, it is important that we bring the core issue to the fore. Join me, Nancy Bonigo, on Softline as we lend our voices to inform and influence your thoughts and actions. This is not just mere talk, it is an invocative program that touches the core of our existence. Grandma is, thank you for being, being there. <laughs> Funky grandma is, she's, in the, she's left in the state of confusion yes. or trying to what learn. What can we do? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now that uh, today, yesterday was zero discrimination day, today continuation of the celebration, let's just assume, what have we achieved? What is left to be done? You know, to like get to this point, this zero discrimination that we are talking about. Is it even possible? Now we're celebrating 10 years of this particular mm. celebration. What has been achieved so far? Mm. What can be done? Even when you shake your head like this, mm. like there's no solution no, I don't understand. <laughs> Do you know this year's thing? Mm -hmm. um, protect. Uh, protect everyone's health. Protect exactly, everyone's protect everyone's uh, rights. rights. Mm. When the children are <sighs> already being... Um, stigmatized, 
from the family? Like she said, what is remaining to be done? Has anything been done? Okay. Mm. Has anything been done? Because even from, the, like I said, the problem is from the family. It's that women that have had these children, your mother-in-law tells the son, it's time to send her out. So what do you do? Most of the time, please, sorry. Most of the time, are these children the first? Children, um, okay. Later. Mm, I've met some that um, the first. I know a family that they have two kids, and the two kids have the first son has cerebral palsy, wasted from the neck down, all limbs. Uh -huh. Then the second child is autistic. Hmm. They have two kids. I met. I worked with a family last week Saturday. She has three kids. The first, um, the first boy is um, has ADHD. The second son has Down syndrome. So it's only the last boy that is a regular child. You know, so in that case, home, your mother-in-law will be the one to pack your box mm, and send you back to your village. You know, one, the only family I know that I can remember with this Down syndrome, so it was their last one. And I never knew they had that kind of a person in the house. We've always known the first to the fifth. We never knew the there was a sixth child. Away. And this child was 13 years when I got to know her. But I've known this family for more than, as in growing up, we know them. They were always caging her. That's what they, that's why I asked they the question. They were always caging her. But when, when I now discovered her, you know, at first, you know, I got scared when I got into the house and she was the first person I so, saw. You know, I was like, ah, who is this? And she was like, I should get out, get out of the house, you know? So on my way outside, I now met, met my, the, my age mate. Okay. <laughs> the reason why I was in the house, you know? She said, oh, her sister. I said, what? Your sister? What? She said, shh. She just dragged her. Oh, back, back into to the to the to the room, you know. Talking about. So trying to ask her what I'm just trying. To, I'm just recalling that incident, okay. asking her what's the problem. Where is she? Where, she, where did she come from? Oh, even brought her from the village or something. Mm. So no, that she she, she had a problem. Mental problem. Uh -huh. Mental say. problem. Mental problem. You know? So, but I didn't stop there. After that incident, I went out and I asked some of my cousins about. She said no, that the father used her for that's what they for, always for say, which is not true. <laughs> Which is not true. That's that is why they get Down her. syndrome is genetic. So you see, so many people have so many misconceptions about yes. this kind of situations. So how do we begin to educate people? How do we begin to tell them, look, this is not what you think. It's a medical condition. It's not and a it's, medical condition. It's a it's neurological, neurological condition. condition. Yeah. And now you being the only person, because so far I've not seen any other person <laughs> like you who's so fighting this cause. You know, so, <laughs> so how do you get people to join you in doing this? Yeah, even when I get people, when I look for volunteers, mm. or even when I want people, they work like two weeks. The other one came to my office and said, I know you will fire me. So I've decided to fire myself. myself. I can't do it. You know, like if you're working with a child with cerebral palsy, the child will draw. Yeah. And then when they want to show that affection, like sometimes they want to miss Thomas and all over your face. You have all the saliva mixed up. Definitely, you can't, because they're very emotional. You do that, you've lost them. So, and then, so it's not everybody that can allow the hug, the pegs. Yeah. You know, you see their faces, they're excited. So even I, had, I was working with someone, she said, Mr. Thomas, you smell. And I understood because it's the saliva from the kids. Yeah. So, you know, when it's all over, I will oh. definitely. Oh, yes. So, okay. she said, you smell, don't come, don't come into my office. So, well, um, hmm. do, you, do you actually have a home? No, we, I, no, I don't even want to do a home for now. We need parents to accept them first. I, we need parents to be proud of driving your daughter to school and bringing out your child. And now, something like autism. Autism mostly affects boys. Boys okay. are more at risk. So, uh, yeah. In fact, boys are more at risk of most conditions because of the um, vulnerability of the male fetus. Okay. The female fetus is stronger, stronger. and more, yeah. m can fight adversity. Okay. The male cannot. Mm. So boys are often more at risk than the girls. Eight out of every ten autistic mm -hmm. child you find will likely be a boy child. Right, so now that we, we're talking about this area of discrimination, was there anything you did like bringing these children out to, sh to show them that, look, even though you have this, you are still like every other child out there? Do they even know? You know. 
to, to make them, you know, to bring them out to the public instead of what parents like do to hide this people. So is there any way we can be bringing them forward, create yes. a program for them? I make them, we see them everywhere, we begin to accept them. I have a dream and which I'm really hoping I'll get partners for. I was talking to someone in Abuja about it because I've not yet gotten someone here that is excited about okay. it. I want us to, I would love to do a day for just special needs kids that mm -hmm. their parents will bring them. Mm -hmm to an open place, yes. drop your child, dance with your child. Well, yeah. if we can get partners, the mothers on one side having pedicures, massages, it's that day to relax. Because it's always the mothers that carry them on yeah. the back. The mo so that day we can just pamper the mothers. Mm. And then we showcase only these children, what they can do. Mm. I have a kid that has Down syndrome, she's about 15. And she is so caring. Give her a baby to take care of. You will love the way she takes care of the child. She's so caring the way she... And she like, I love you. She tells me I love you like a hundred times, times in a day. And that <laughs> makes my day. Yeah. Like, I love you. I love you. Mm. I'll buy you this. I'll buy you a car. Oh, I like... Yeah, buying all this for me. <laughs> okay, so I know that's the dream. But when, where do you think the society can come in to achieve this kind of a dream of yours? Let us start celebrating these kids. And they're all empowered. That's what our society doesn't know. Okay, I always say, look at Richard Branson. Look at Ashaki. He's ranking 11th on the billboard. He has 1 billion streams. Ashaki is autistic. Look at Richard Branson, owner of Virgin Atlantic. Mm. Look at Bill Gates. Look at um, the guy that owns Tesla. What's his name now? Um, yeah, what's his um, name? The I forgot. Man? No, this guy that owns Tesla. He, he has autism and he has, um, he has like comorbidity. I've forgotten his name now. Oh, I've forgotten his name if it well, comes remember, up. We'll but look at Bill Gates. Mm -hmm. Look at mm -hmm. Elon Musk. <laughs> look at Elon Musk. <laughs> look at um, um, Will Smith. Mm. Will Smith has ADHD. Look at Michael Phelps. Look at Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein was so intelligent that when he died, even as a child living with um, learning dis um, disability, even as an adult, when he died, scientists stole his brain. They needed to okay, know. Okay, now that you've, you're mentioning, you only mentioned uh, Asake, which is our own our here. Own, yeah. I think we should have more examples of because our families own. are not That's coming out. out. They have obviously relate. come out so with this is, one because it's successful. This awareness mm. is supposed to be very, very. Elaborate. Any elaborate that yeah. even companies that you had an advantage if you employ a dyslexic because they are super creative and imaginative. So that some companies like companies that deal with creativity and art, go look for or companies that do designs and all of that, go look for a okay. dyslexic employee. That's where your power is. But they don't mm. know. Then they should know. Autistic kids are good in details. They're good in mathematics, they're good in arts, but because it's, it's a societal yeah, yeah, thing. Why Ashaki so... is coming out, or why his family is proud to bring him out, is because he's successful. Yeah, so... That's the only reason. Because if not, that's the only reason. Yeah. Hmm. Hey, he's successful because he was actually encouraged. Yes, he had parents yes, that accepted he was, yes, him. He was and encouraged, you know. Mm -hmm. That's why. Mm -hmm. so yeah, that's why we have to dwell more on parents accepting these children. Yes, they really accepting them. Siblings. Them. As, uh, I have a kid that was brought to me. He's 16. And he has been in the house for 14 years without seeing the outside of the house. The neighbors didn't even know he was living there. Hmm. And I asked the parents, how old is he? They said 16. That's his first time of coming out in the two years. He's been at home locked up for 14 years. Now, how do you help such a child? Number one, one of the symptoms he did was he was already antisocial. Mm -hmm. Of course. He was Lots wild. Yes. The boy was wild. The boy was... I told the parents, we can't even release oh him, God. in quotes, into the society. And I told the mom, I said, do you have younger daughters? She said, yes. I said, be ready for inbreeding. Because this boy that you think that is not human, is fully human. And she said, yes. The other day, he bashed into her room and tore her bra. I said, yes, because he's fully male. Yes. I said, she, he's going to rape you and rape every other female in that house. Because these are hormones he cannot control. Yes, naturally. So the only thing that's wrong it. with him is mm. just that. And because you've caged him. 
you've made him turn to an animal no. over time. Hmm. If you had sent him to school, allowed him to mix up, so how behavioral they, how, therapy mm, would have mm, mm, happened. How, how were they able to bring him to your place? Okay, I think one of the programs we did here, mm -hmm. the mom heard and came with the boy. I said, I heard about uh, on the airwaves. Mm -hmm. So Ooh. I think I read out my number here yeah, and then she course. called me. And when she brought, everybody ran and left me. My staff ran because the boy was hitting the. You know, they are not used to being caged. Mm. So immediately, the door, um, the door was closed. He was banging at the gate. The father had to hold him. The way the father even held him. I said, like sir, you can't hold him like that. You're already making him. How do you drag your child like that? What did I do? I started rubbing his hands, you know. Mm. I started giving, rubbing his hand, touching. He looked at me. I started coming down. And the next thing, he started, rubbing he started rubbing my hands. For a moment, he there rubbed my face. No, I wasn't. That was in charge. I was in charge. I knew he wouldn't. This one anything. is great. I rubbed you know? his cheeks and then he touched. He rubbed my cheeks. Now, let me surprise you because this guy is a full male oh viral. Right in front of us, he had an erection. Jesus. Sitting with me. I told the mom. Oh. Have you seen and it? you were nowhere scared of this whole thing. No. no. <laughs> I knew nothing would happen. Mm. Yeah. He was just having a meltdown. So I knew that I just needed to yeah. cue him down. So I started, I gave him the first touch. He looked at me. The first time he touched me, and I did as well, I was pain. He looked at me. So when he kept pressing this place, mm. you know, mm. this, yeah, and I was doing as if I was having, he stopped touching. I was now gently guarding this place. Hmm. We had connected, so there was nothing he would do anymore. So you see, it's just understanding these children. Yes. Oh, we have to go. <laughs> <laughs> we have to go. But I tell you, this is a very serious issue. It's a very serious thing. I think we should talk more and more. We can't just stop talking about And it's this. avoidable, some yeah. of these things. So if parents are, if the child is taught about the possible factors before becoming a mother, you can avoid it. Some of these learning disabilities are avoidable. For example, I said, women that where you live when you are pregnant can give is a factor. Mm. Women that live around where pain, lead, mercury is a factor. Mm. So there are a lot of cultural practices. Mm. You know, you keep falling your child and you think not. There are yeah. a lot of things that you yeah, can we have, do we don't that you have can to, avoid we have, to, we have to run oh. along. I would have loved us to talk about those factors that could lead to this. <laughs> Since people say it's spiritual and mm -hmm. all that. So it's just okay, genetic. We have, to, we have to go. Can you just give us a closing remark? Grandma, we have to go. We go carried away. Actually, I was. Um, you know, I'm so amazed. Okay. Um, I thank God for this program. I mm -hmm. really, really love it. Um, I was um, also thinking um, discrimination starts from the family. Even these children with neurological conditions, we don't know what they are facing. Most of us are hearing that for the first time. Um, I, I also was thinking, what about the ordinary discrimination we have at home, in churches, at work? You know, if we could have that with our fellow people, mm. fellow human beings, who you are know, with our yeah, perceived to be normal, yeah, who are perceived to be normal, mm. and you feel so much pain and hurt mm. when somebody tries to push you aside mm. or something, and how now you more? don't look at these kids that you okay, we how look at them more? how much more these ones. Right. So let us try as much as we can to bring this light into the darkness. Mm. Um, when bringing this light into the darkness, when you have an opportunity to listen. To this kind of talk, I am happy for Mrs. Thomas. Yeah, and I also want Grandma have to continue. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to go. We'll please, have to let us try let's, and let's, make and it. I, I always <laughs> like her to, to give her number to say because something. I always know people okay. listening would we'll want, want to, to contact. Give a call. Okay, so just give us the one minute. Let's to show love. Let's show love to number. them. Okay, yeah. like we always say, I teach audacious children with evil spirits. I mean, children with special needs are not evil it's spirits. Mm. They are just differently empowered. If you can't be the sun, be the star. Just be the best of whatever you are. Mm. 081 01 81 4386. That's the number. Thank you so much, Thank Mrs. You. Thomas, for coming on the show. That's the most That's you can do. Always show love when you come yeah, to chorus with true. children. Seriously, it will make a great difference. Thank you for being wow. a part of the show. From all of us in the studio, bye bye and thanks for watching.